Previously on MasterChef, the home cooks were given a dream opportunity that soon turned into a nightmare. Do you think that I am serving that out there? And Tracy's time in the MasterChef kitchen came to an emotional end. Right now is where it ends. <laughs> Tonight, the home cooks will face the most difficult test yet. You'll be cooking a dish created by the man who put the F in food, Gordon Ramsay. And few will make the grade. You've annihilated it. I could cry. Now, just five cooks remain to battle it out in front of three culinary heavyweights. At stake, a quarter of a million dollars and the title of Master Chef. Come on, guys. Come through, please. Top five. I'm feeling awesome. Five steps away from winning it. I'm going to take everybody down. The end is in sight. It's within my reach. I'm here to get the title of Master Chef. Let's go, quick. Wow. Okay. We've got Jennifer, Ben, myself, Adrian, and Christian. So I've got stiff competition for this one, but I'm ready to fight. I'm starving to be on top. So who's been dying for another mystery box challenge? <laughs> <laughs> As with every mystery box challenge, the contestants have to prepare, cook, and present one incredible dish using all or some of the ingredients inside the box. Jennifer, if there's one thing you want to start cooking with, what would be under that box? Some kind of meat. Right, Christian. I love seafood, and that's where I come from. Ben. Some flour and butter and baking powder. OK, on the count of three, please lift those boxes. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Oh, Ugh. Ground meat, you son of a bitch. Ground pork, ground veal, ground beef. You have the most amazing celery and carrots, fresh corn, bell peppers, fresh mushrooms, rice and potatoes. Ground meat, there is no way I can make that glamorous. And then I see the Worcestershire and I realize Chef Ramsay has just given me all the ingredients for a shepherd's pie. That's five of the most talented cooks we've ever had in this competition. This is where I want you now to really come out your safety zone. I'm just friggin' stumped. What the hell am I gonna do with brown meat? But that's the challenge. The simpler it is, the harder it is. We want magic. You have 60 minutes to dazzle us. Your time starts from now. Off we go. Ground beef, ground veal, and ground pork. It's nothing really special. What am I supposed to do with this? Do a meatball three ways. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a play on meatloaf. On the very, very first day of this competition, Chef Ramsay asked if I could cook British food. And I told him, I'll make you shepherd's pie and let you find out. Ground veal has delicate texture, kind of like lamb. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to bump it up with just a little bit of beef stock in the Worcester uh, to try to get a little bit more of that authentic British flavor into there. And uh, I'm hoping that he's really going to love it today. Uh, ben, you're doing shepherd's pie as well. Kind of obvious though, right? It's pretty crazy. Susie is also making shepherd's pie. Oh. But that's fine. You know, uh, it's a competition and I'm a good sport. And if I can give Susie a little bit of a hint, then more power to her. It's going to be a very interesting challenge. You yeah. really have to be creative to do something that pops here. I would make an interpretation of a Hungarian goulash and then a little bit of boiled potatoes and carrots. And who do you think is going to excel with these ingredients? Ben and Jennifer. I think that rusticity that they bring to their food could really shine here. 45 minutes to go. I think ground meat's kind of a tough one to come up with something incredible. This is the first mystery box to stump me. I don't know what the to do with it. 
Hello, Jennifer. What are you making? Meatloaf? Yes. I'm going to use actually all three meats. I'm mixing a lot of the vegetables in because I like that crunch. So what do you think? Who stands in your way? Who's the competition? Adrian. Adrian. You've been the apparent front runner the last couple of weeks. Uh, do you feel like you're the one to beat? I think I'm the one that everyone underestimates. Don't underestimate me. I think you've changed Christian's mind anyway. <laughs> Right, Christian, competition's getting down to you plus four. Did you think you were going to get this far? Yeah, I did. Really? I'm going to make it to the end, Chef. I'm going to win this. What are you doing? Uh, making chili. What are you serving it with? Um, it's chili. Christian's making a chili, and to make chili in an hour, I think, is really stupid, honestly. <laughs> At least have some intelligence. Doesn't sound like you're pitching for this top spot. We'll see what everybody else comes up with. Adrian, what do you got for us today? I got three different meatballs for you. Three? Wow. I'm going to do the pork chile verde meatball, the beef picadillo, and I'm kind of Italian with the veal. And each one has a different sauce. I love these all-steel MasterChef pans. They're non-stick because they use Thermalon. Yeah, it's working They're out great. pretty good. Check that out. Mm -hmm. You're considered kind of a front rider by some of your competitors. Who do you think your biggest competition is left? Uh, right now, probably Jennifer. I guess Susie's not an issue for you then? No. And looking over, and I think he's making three different types of meatballs, three different ways with three different sauces. It's conceptually a nightmare. All right, guys, just over 30 minutes. All right, Ben. Yes, this chef. Far into the competition, you want to make a shepherd's pie. I'm doing gourmet. I'm making it rich. Beautiful, delicious dark sauce on the inside. Perfectly moist, but still dry, crisp, beautiful mashed potato Check. top. Shepherd's pie. I've been eating it for 45 years. Yeah, I know. It's a dangerous skull, chef. Right, Susie. Hey, chef. Talk to me. What are you doing? Uh, it's a repeat of what Ben said. I'm actually doing a shepherd's pie as well. Ah, so it's a battle of the shepherd's pie. It is, chef. Good luck. Ben and I are doing the exact same dish. It's like showing up to prom and in other girls, like, wearing your dress. <laughs> Ben's not really a savory person. He's more of a dessert guy. I don't think Ben's gonna look prettier than me in that dress. Love the sound of Adrian's Mabel yeah. Three Ways. Well, I right. think that he really captured the spirit of what we were asking for. It did mm -hmm. something risky and hopefully a skill to execute three meatballs three ways. I think everyone sees him as the one to beat yeah. in the long run in this competition. And Jennifer. Yeah, I'm worried about meatloaf. I don't think meatloaf takes it in this challenge. But the secret of a great meatloaf is in the texture and the seasoning. Mm -hmm. Something you else. You have to be a meatloaf like I've never had before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, just over five minutes. Start thinking about your finishing touches, your plating, how you're going to serve this. Yes. I'm totally sneaking peeks at Ben. His shepherd's pie looks massive. It's like something that Godzilla would eat, like, <laughs> you know, and mine's like what a normal person would eat. 20 seconds to go. Make those plates jump. The judges only taste three out of the five, so I have got to make it look really good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop! Finishing touches. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop! Hands up. Good job, guys. I'm looking at everything I did in under an hour, and I'm pretty impressed with myself. You know, I made three different sauces and three different meatballs. I'm feeling really confident about it. Really well done. We've chosen the top three dishes. The first dish we wanted to taste really captured all three meats into a dish that we're hoping really kind of brings some sort of culinary inspiration. And that dish belongs to Jennifer. Yeah. Welcome. Come on up. I was a little surprised to see Jennifer up there. I feel like chili is a little bit more complex than making a meatloaf. Tell us about the dish. Adult meatloaf. Okay. I used the bell pepper, both the red and the yellow. Uh -huh. I used all three meats. I wanted to make sure it had a lot of color in there. I put a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. Hmm. I taste all the individual vegetables, those that are almost kind of undercooked. The sauce is a little flat. But that really is 
adult comfort food. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. When you cut through a meatloaf, generally it's dense and sort of packed with protein. This one's got this array of colors, contrast, and textures. It's absolutely delicious. Great job. Thank you. Well Thank done. You. Thank you so much. Wow. Look at that. I can look at one bite and I see all these different little colors and vegetables and shapes and sizes. You've won three mystery box challenges more than anybody. And this could be your fourth. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chef. I don't think Jennifer understands technique very well. I definitely think that I'm the top girl in this competition by far. All right, the next dish we want to try also utilized all three of the proteins. It was a very unique plating, and also this person stayed true to their homey roots. That person is Adrian. Adrian has three different types of meatballs, three different ways. It looks like vomit on a plate. Tell me what we have. The picadillo, it's uh, the yellow pepper roasted carrot potato. That's beef, and inside of that is carrot, celery, and onion, mm -hmm. grated to keep it moist. And the last one is veal with parsley and parmesan. The plating is beautiful. This dish is screaming for one thing, and that's a giant glass of water. It's so salty. You know, I think we were all, oh. This is like we were all head fake. This is like a beautiful concept, nice idea, beautiful plating, like a Moreau painting. You buy it, you bring it home. It's a fake. Adrian's salty balls obviously didn't go well with the judges. They're supposed to be picking the three best dishes. Okay, third and final dish we're dying to taste because it looks incredible. If they don't try my dish today, I'm in the bottom two yet again. And for me, that just means I'm the next person out of here. Ben Starr. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I feel a little gypped right now. I find it really unfair that I'm not in the top three because I know that my dish tastes really good. Shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. Tell me, what's underneath that mash? We have brown veal, onion, carrot, celery, and mushrooms sautéed in butter. On top, we have garlic mashed potatoes finished with a reduction of red wine, beef stock, with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to remind you of home. I've never had a shepherd's pie with veal in it before. But I'm very proud to say I have now. It's delicious. Thank you, sir. You've got the spice <laughs> of the savory mince, but you've glamorized it. I was getting very worried that you're slipping away in this competition. Yes, sir. The shepherd's pie has brought you back. Congratulations. Thank delicious. You, I saw, like, the glistening carrots and the caramelization on the meat and the sweetness. I said, this dish is going to be good. I thought it was bolognese with mashed potatoes, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> bolognese with mashed potatoes? Well, that's what we call it. Yeah, I know you guys call it shepherd's pie or wonder, <laughs> wonder pie. Or... <laughs> mm. Have you ever won a mystery box? No. No. This could be your big day, Ben. This is good. Maybe you're a little bit heavy-handed on the cream. But the first and best whatever kind of pie I've ever had. <laughs> good job. Thank you, sir. It's very, very good. It's very, very hard. It means all the saving meat. The presentation on the shepherd's pie. So the texture oh, was a gorgeous mouthfeel on yeah. the side. Okay. My chances now of winning today are 
because they weren't happy with Adrian's dish. So there's a really, 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 really good chance they're going to call my name as the winner. The advantage in the next stage of this competition goes to... Oh, just say it. Just say it. Just say Ben Star, Ben Star, Ben Star. Congratulations. Tonight's ground meat mystery box, the top three dishes have been tasted by the judges. Jennifer's meatloaf, Adrian's meatballs three ways, and Ben's shepherd's pie. There was one dish that had that edge. It was a very bold move. The advantage goes to... Finally won a mystery box challenge, <laughs> Ben Star! <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Finally, I've won a mystery box. So close to the finals, this is the time for me to win a mystery box, and I did. Ah, oh, it feels so good. Are you ready to see what the advantage is? I am so ready. Let's go. Great job. For the first time, Ben is now in control of the elimination test, where at least one person will leave MasterChef. But as always, the theme is in the hands of the judges. Today, you'll get to decide between three dishes that you and your rivals will be cooking, okay? But they're not just anyone's dishes. They've been created and prepared by a, a special guest. This individual's got restaurants all around the world and 12 Michelin stars. One of the best chefs in the world. And I'm gonna have to cook his food. This just got really serious, really fast. Are you ready to meet our mystery guest? Yes. Okay. Hi, Ben. I'm Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's signature dish? Not exactly what I wanted to do today. All right, Ben. Under these covers are three dishes personally created by Chef Ramsay. The first dish is... Pan roasted filet of halibut with crab, crushed new potatoes, and a basil vinaigrette. The second dish is roasted duck breast with honey glazed baby onions, minted peas, and Madeira sauce. Wow, I love duck. And the third dish is the most amazing roasted loin of venison sat on a bed of beautifully braised red cabbage with parsnip puree and a rich, sumptuous red wine sauce. Which dish do you want to cook today? I probably have cooked venison tenderloin more frequently than anybody out there. I want to cook the venison tenderloin. Smart move, very smart move. Here's the advantage. Once you've eaten and tasted, dissected, you can ask me three questions. Please. Regarding the shredded beets, I obviously can't ask you how you make your beets, right? <laughs> and it's red cabbage. It's red cabbage, it's not beets. That's the first question. The genie grants me three wishes, and I screw up the first one. I throw it in the trash. What was I thinking? Second question. Your parsnip puree, is there an element of dairy in the parsnip puree? A couple of tablespoons of milk as it's cooked it's blended and it's finished with cream. The cream is reduced, so the cream thickens at the end. So, two questions down, one to go. I have to ask you about the cook on the loin because it does not appear to be seared. It was almost warmed in butter first and then seared at the end. Got my work cut out for me. Today the bar is set extremely high. Because in this challenge, you'll be cooking a dish created by the man who put the F in food. Chef Gordon Ramsay. Holy crap. The intimidation factor has gone up again. I have two words for you. Good luck. We presented Ben with three stunning dishes. Ben Starr chose... Roasted loin of venison. I've never worked with venison in my entire life. I've never tasted venison. I'm officially going home today. Thanks, Ben. 
You'll all need to taste it, so come on up here. With no recipe to follow, the contestants must determine each of the five ingredients on the plate and how the dish was put together. Dive in, dive in, dive in. By looking and tasting alone. This is the mushroom. No questions, please. You have 90 minutes to become Gordon Ramsay. Your time starts now. Off you go. The contestants first have five minutes in the MasterChef pantry to select what they think are the components of Gordon's venison dish. One missed ingredient could send somebody home. I know he probably has a lot of things that he uses in there that you may not pick up on on the first note. One small little thing that you don't taste could be the reason why you go home. I am one step away from the final four. I am working as precisely as I can. I'm feeling today like a deer caught in headlights. <laughs> so within the first 20 minutes, you've got to get your beetroot on, you've got to get your cabbage braised, and then start slowly poaching the venison. How's the mushroom cooked? So the mushroom's roasted. And then sort of finish with thyme, garlic, uh, olive oil. You have so many cooking techniques. What will, will most people screw up? I think you'll see four out of five of them, except Ben, roast and overcooked venison. So it'll be gray on the outside and maybe pink in the middle, but you won't have that even mm -hmm. temperature. All right, guys, you have less than an hour. Can I boil my parsnips now? Just gotta worry about cooking my venison pretty much towards the end. And there's only four others, so. Not only is the dish intimidating, but the competition is intimidating. Whoever makes the worst Ramsay dish goes home. Right. Hello, Chef. How you doing? Doing good. Have you locked it in? Have you got it? Yes, Chef. Who's cooking inside the MasterChef kitchen for the last time? I feel like Christian is cooking for the last time in the MasterChef kitchen today, Chef. Have you tasted the venison yet? Not yet, Chef. Taste it. A bit of cabbage, a bit of sauce, a bit of puree. Taste and adjust. Yes, chef. There is pressure to perfect this dish from way more than just from the judges. I'm from Texas. I can't screw up venison. They'll throw me out of Texas. Have you tasted the venison yet? Not yet, chef. Taste and adjust. Come on. Taste everything. How are we doing, Adrian? It's pretty crazy, ain't it? Yeah. How are you going to cook the venison? My instinct was going to be in the pan facing butter. Did you see how but Ben's doing it? Ben obviously got to ask three questions, right? You think probably the first question he would have asked is how to cook the venison. That was, that was my instinct because I saw it. Because if you look at the venison, it's perfectly pink right. and it's soft inside and not cooked through. It's not charred on the outside. You've got to really think about cooking technique here. Good luck, Adrian. Thank you, guys. Well, the judges are making me second guess my technique on my venison, so starting to think about what the hell am I going to do? <sighs> All right, guys, your time is half over. Just under 45 minutes left to go. Stay focused. Who do you think is going to do the best version of this dish? I am. Why? I'm good at recreating. I'm good at uh, looking at a dish and putting it back together. Hopefully do you right and be able to recreate your dish just as well. Who's leaving? Um, Susie. Susie's a very smart intellect. Yeah, she overthinks. I'm not done with that. It still has a little bitter, but with the butter into it, I think it'll work. Is that the right size mushroom? I think so. It, it might have been a little bit bigger, but... I've done parsnip crisps. I've braised cabbage before. I can roast beets. I can uh, butter poach a uh, portobello mushroom. My concern is really this venison. I've never cooked venison before in my life. I'm looking back at Ben's station. I'm noticing that he has the parsnips actually in with cream. I was going to do the cream afterwards, but that might be something he actually got from the judges. So I'm going to do that exact same thing. I think we're going to see a dichotomy between the cooks here today. It'll be very apparent when these dishes hit yeah. the table who understands mm -hmm. the technique behind creating a dish like this and who doesn't. All of them made the puree with the core, right? So you'll never get that fine, smooth, mm -hmm. rich puree. Adrian's was really grainy, and so Christian's, was Christian's. Is, Christian's is saft, actually split mm -hmm. yeah. Christian, convinced he's going to produce the best venison dish. His arrogance is the first thing that yeah. will take him down. Fascinating part 
There's only five things on that plate. Four ingredients and one sauce. What's the hardest technique to execute in this dish? The hardest thing for me on this one will be this sear on the venison. Ten minutes to go. I take the largest of the two tenderloins and I go ahead and cut it open. The first piece, gray all the way through. And the other tenderloin, the one that I'm going to plate, is smaller than this one, which means it's overcooked. Just over two minutes to go. I definitely cooked the venison differently today than I normally do, just because I had no idea how Ramsey did what he did. It really threw me off. 30 seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop plating. Oh, son of a bitch. Hands up, please. Well done. I had the advantage. Flushed it down the toilet. <laughs> I'm pissed off because I'm thinking I'm going home and I don't want to. Who's happy with that dish? Wow, well, I'm feeling great. My dish looks spot on and uh, I think I did a fantastic job. One out of five? Susie, can you come up? Bring us your dish, please. Do I think that Susie talks a better game than she has? Absolutely. Sorry, you're not going to win. Master Chef, that's all there is to it. Oh, wow. Thank you. Wow. Did you sketch it? How'd you remember that it's almost exactly like it was? Thank you. What technique did you use to cook it? First, I pan seared it, and I realized it was too tough. So uh, I melted a little bit of butter, and then I put it in the oven before I sliced into it. Parsley puree is sweet and creamy and good. The cabbage is delicious. The beets are good. The sauce is flavorful, although buttery. Buttery? OK. Good visual, good, good flavor. Thank you. Easy. Slight unevenness on the cooking here. Yeah. Hey, you taste the butter for sure. Really rich. Cabbage is nice. As a whole, you should be pretty proud of this dish. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, visually, it had impact. You've got the balance right between the acidic and the sweetness. You've never cooked venison before. No, chef. Not at all. It tastes delicious. You did a great job. Thank you, chef. Well done. Christian, let's do it. I got everything on the plate. It tastes really good. I wouldn't do anything different. I tried to, as hard as I could to make it taste the same way. I think I really captured the aesthetic of Gordon Ramsay's plate. I wouldn't say you totally got it cook on the venison is it's not terrible your parsnip puree split you got like two things going against you there excuse me there's a lot of pepper there yeah it's a lot of yeah pepper. a lot of pepper the meat should be the hero, and it's not, Christian. If you could put the kind of bravado and attitude that spews from your mouth into your plate, I think you might be a top contender. Ben Star. I do not want to put this plate in front of the judges. All right, so the man with the huge advantage, how did it pay off? I squandered my advantage. I cook venison tenderloin all the time at home. I barely sear the outside of it. I eat it incredibly rare. I learned that the proper method for cooking this venison was to warm it in butter. I had the butter at around 200 degrees. I was watching it, I was touching it like every minute or two, but it just 200 degrees escaped from me. A perfect temp. 
for the venison is just shy of 140. You are boiling it in butter at 200 degrees. You don't even have a shot before it goes in the pan. This is a far cry from Chef Ramsay's dish, and it's a shame to see a beautiful animal and a lovely cut go to waste. Yes, Chef, I agree. It's such a shame, because it's so overcooked. And the sauce, you've gone too far. It's so overpowering. The main ingredient has been destroyed. Every single bit of criticism and disappointment is warranted, because I have made a colossal, unforgivable error. You've annihilated it, and it's just, I could cry. I'm about to. This elimination test, the cooks had to replicate Chef Ramsay's signature venison dish. Even after winning the mystery box, Ben has just blown his advantage with a disastrous dish. I could cry. I'm about to. Jennifer, please, let's go. Ben got to ask three questions, so I was watching to see, you know, how he was cooking some things. Now I'm a little worried. I flash back to the initial dish that I presented you. This is miles away from there, Jennifer. Absolutely. 100% agree, Chef. Jennifer, someone's leaving Master Chef tonight. That. I'm thinking, God, I'm finally gonna get rid of her. I got like my fingers crossed behind my back, and I'm thinking, please, please, please. <laughs> I understand. How did you cook the cabbage? I um, slow braised it with a little bit of the vinegar, and then at the very end, I squeeze a little, little bit of lemon, very little. Cabbage needs more cooking. Yeah. And the venison, you've gone past that pinkness. Damn. It's a far cry from what Gordon's dish is, obviously. We've seared porterhouses and fillets and cooked so much meat on this journey. And this is just a massive disappointment. This Bambi could be uh, your ride home. I go into each challenge saying the same thing. You gotta be number one. There is no other option. I know I'm better than this. Last up, Adrian. I just don't even want to go up there. I'm really embarrassed at my performance, and I know that I've completely just messed up Chef Ramsay's dish. Holy crap. Yeah, I, uh, no excuses, you know. I apologize for bastardizing that dish. Well, thank you for apologizing. Talk to me about the venison. How'd you cook that? I was completely tripped up on how you cooked it when I tasted it, so the only thing I could imagine was covering it with butter in a pan. And where's the rest of the mushroom gone? I trimmed it up because that's how I remember seeing it. You've just sort of taken my $87 dish from my menu, and I wouldn't even pay $7 for that. I wouldn't either, Chef. No, you'd have to pay them to eat it. This one was nothing but a bit of an embarrassment. Damn. <laughs> It's just all over the place again. I agree, Graham. As far as the venison itself, all I can say is, oh dear. It's not gonna taste good, Joe. You're, you're right about that. Look. Disappointing Chef Ramsay is worse than my own embarrassment. I'm kind of already just preparing myself to go home. What do you think? It's separated. Pepper. Yeah, very pepper friendly. I can see it's burning now. It's sliced incorrectly. They didn't get it. They didn't have texture in the reduction. The technique behind creating a... How that temperature goes all the way. 
I don't want to go home. It would be extremely hard to go home at this point. Okay, that was a very tough challenge. And that was a tough call. But there was one dish that stood out because it was well thought out. And it was the closest to my dish. That dish belongs to Susie. Well done. Thank you. For somebody who's never cooked venison or even eaten it. Never tasted it. You connect. Well done. Thank you, chef. Congratulations. You're in the final four. <gasps> Thank you. I can't believe I just won. It's just such a huge honor to replicate Chef Gordon Ramsay's work and then for him to taste it. Oh, what a great way to go into the final four. This moment is my dream come true. This is a tough choice because all four of you have come a long way. But we do need to eliminate. We want to see the following individuals. Adrian, come on down, please. The next person that we'd like to see... Christian. I haven't been called up into the bottom once. I think they expect great things out of me, because I'm great. Jennifer, why don't you come join us? Ben Starr, join Jennifer, Christian, and Adrian, please. I do not want to leave this competition, but it is a huge injustice to the meat for me to do what I did, knowing how I could have perfectly cooked it. Adrian, Christian, Jennifer, Ben, all of us expected something better. Jennifer? Yes. Step forward. Christian, step forward. Jennifer, Christian, both of your dishes were below par. <laughs> Jennifer, Christian, both of your dishes were below par. but they weren't at the bottom two. You're through. Back to your stations, please. Thank you, chef. I think it says a lot. I'm still here. I'm still the best chef ever. Adrian, your dish looked somewhat confused. The puree was broken, and the sauce was miles away. Ben. Puree broken. Sauce was embarrassing. So over reduced. Your venison, your Rolls Royce, was overcooked. <sighs> the person leaving MasterChef. And it really pains me to say this because I've become fond of this individual. And we truly thought that this individual was going into the final three, maybe even the final two. I'm sorry to say. Ben Starr. Let me tell you something. Your excitement and your enthusiasm is legendary. You love food. I love food, Chef. You have a career in this industry, mm -hmm. and you have got to take that and reach for the stars. I will, Chef. Come here. Well done. Oh, good job, man. This has been such an honor. Oh. 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 oh, great to meet. Awesome. <laughs> Come here. Come here.
final question. Yes. Who is going to win MasterChef? Adrian. Adrian. Win it. You understand me? Win it. I love you guys. You have changed my life. I can't wait to see you all again soon. This has been a life-changing experience for me. And ultimately, I go home with happiness and incredible friendship and such intense education because cooking is my life. And I'm walking away from this whole experience much the richer for having spent the last few weeks of my life here at MasterChef. Bye. One, two, three, four. Woo! <laughs> Relax. <laughs> yes. It's so intense right now. I want it more than ever. I could just see it right on the horizon. I only have three people ahead of me, and I'm going to take them down. Congratulations. Thank you. I want to win MasterChef more than I've wanted anything in my whole life. The title means more to me than the $250,000. I came here to prove this to me. I want the MasterChef title. I'm, I'm taking the MasterChef title. Get some sleep, because you're going to need it. Good night. Final four. We're in the f It's a roller coaster, baby. Get on board. <laughs>